Witnesses were found who had crucial evidence in the case. There was approximately five persons who came forward. Another witness to give evidence from New York was Daniel Cahill. So Daniel Cahill probably is the key prosecution witness. We've just watched another short clip from the RTE primetime programme. Initially we see Senior Investigating Officer Mr Pat Murray. Now Mr Murray has written a book and he has given several radio interviews and podcasts etc explaining how he was very very much into fine detail. Leaving no stone unturned, the devil is in the detail is a name on one of the chapters in his book. So there's a red flag raised here immediately when Mr Murray says approximately five people came forward. Now, the reason why I say a red flag, this man eulogizes about his attention to detail, and yet he's not sure how many people came forward to make statements against Aaron. So it's just something to mention, and we will go into much more detail into why Mr. Murray was so vague in this area. It goes on then, the clip to show Daniel Cahill, and names Daniel Cahill as the main witness who gave a statement against Aaron, who said Aaron confessed to him about the mother of Garda Adrian Donoghue. Now the main thing is here, there's some sort of a, a situation where they say Daniel Cahill came forward. That is totally untrue, it's factually incorrect. Pat Murray is telling a lie here. We have, it's facts that Daniel Cahill was pulled out of an attic, an attic he was supposedly in for six hours. Again, will be another video. And he's caught with cannabis, he's caught with steroids, and he's totally illegal. He's an illegal immigrant, New York. And yet, here we have him being portrayed in some form of a hero situation. And now, I'll take you through um, Daniel Cahill's testimony and how we see it should be dealt with. On the 24th of June, 2020, Daniel Cahill said in his testimony from an office in New York, I did not lie to the court. I am under oath and I haven't laid once. We now look at a situation and an event which we would believe will disprove beyond any reasonable doubt that the statement made by Daniel Cahill in June 2020 was incorrect. We're going to deal with a machete and knife attack on a group of people in Yonkers, New York. Daniel Cahill was questioned about this by Aaron's counsel for defence, Justin McQuaid. Now, we did agree in court that there was a four-year protection order against Daniel Cahill. And during his cross-examination, Daniel Cahill uh, went to great pains and mentioned on multiple times about a knife that was found at the scene of the attack. And I'll just read from Daniel Cahill's uh, testimony here. On further looking into it, if you had investigated yourself, you would see there was a weapon at the scene, a knife found with someone else's fingerprints on it. Now, these are words from Daniel Cahill's testimony. And as I said, he went to great pains and mentioned us on multiple times about the knife. And in the meantime, we have acquired text messages from the people who were attacked that night by Daniel Cahill and his friends. These text messages are from the morning after the attack. So we're going to focus in first on this knife that was found that Daniel Cahill mentions. And I'm just going to read a couple of lines from the text messages. The text messages are, are in full for anyone to investigate if they want to contact us and do so. That's no problem. I'm reading from the text message. Got on to the cops through because I brought one of them to the bin to find the knife that your man Edo was using. I chased him or after it, I saw Edo dump it as he ran off. Now again, this gives provenance to the knife. And the people who were attacked seen this friend of Daniel Cahill's, Edo, dump the knife. And that's how the knife was found at the scene. Now, if we move on, and we're going to take a couple of just small snippets again. I'm just reading lines from the text messages. But the, art, the whole text message and conversations are available. I seen Dano whipping out the machete for the first time. We were able to name three of them to the police. Edo, Dano and we've blanked out that board name. Can push charges as Dano could have killed him stone dead. Seen Dano just missing, name blanked out. His uncle is a detective in the Bronx. Witness Dano just missing, man's name is blocked out, in the chest. So therefore, 
we are saying that the testimony that Daniel Cahill gave in June 2020 and the statement where he said he was telling no lies. Daniel Cahill, that is incorrect. On the 24th of June 2020, Daniel Cahill said in his testimony from an office in New York, I did not lie to the court. I am under oath and I haven't lied once. We now look at a situation and event which we believe will prove beyond reasonable doubt that the statement made by Daniel Cahill in June 2020 is totally incorrect. In this situation, Daniel Cahill was the bartender in the Coachman's Bar in Woodlawns in Yonkers, New York. Aaron got cut over the right eye after an altercation at the pool table. And while Daniel Cahill says, while he was in the bathroom at Aaron, Aaron said that the person who was after hitting him was dealing with the wrong person and he would get the same treatment as the Garda who was shot in Ireland. Now there's a number of serious issues here with Daniel Cahill's statement. Firstly, I'm just going to take you through just a couple of brief statements that we'd like to look at. As part of his testimony, he said, I told you there were multiple people in the bar, sir. I was the only person in the bathroom. And when he was asked how long did the event take place in the bathroom, Daniel Cahill says, I was there for 15 to 20 minutes, that kind of thing. Now there's a couple of serious issues with this. Daniel Cahill was the only employee in the coachman's that night, and therefore a barman waiting in the bathroom for 15 or 20 minutes and leaving the bar unattended is simply highly unlikely. In fact, it didn't happen. Now, a number of people have come forward who were in the bar at that evening, and they have said, that Aaron was not on his own in the bathroom with Daniel Cahill. And they have said very clearly that Aaron left the coachman's bar no more than five minutes after the altercation took place. So therefore, Daniel Cahill, the information you gave in your testimony is totally incorrect. On the 24th of June, 2020, Daniel Cahill said in his testimony from an office in New York, I did not lie to the court. I am under oath and I haven't lied once. So Daniel Cahill probably is the key prosecution witness. You have just seen two very clear examples of the man who is described as the key witness in the case against Aaron tell lies in his testimony. This totally contradicts the statement Daniel Cahill made in court on the 24th of June 2020. I'm now going to take you through another situation, another event that Daniel Cahill was questioned on by counsel for the defence, Mr Justin McQuaid. And we're going to see here now a picture of a group of men at Holt Pia and the flags being held by these people is the 32 County Sovereignty Committee. And described in court, 32 County Sovereignty Committee, was described in court as the mouthpiece of the IA. When this picture was shown to Daniel Cahill, he was questioned, what was the event for? And he said it was a walk in aid of charity. And he was asked again, what charity? And was it a charity in Dublin 13? And Daniel Cahill answered, I'm not sure, I didn't organize the event. I was just asked to participate in it. Very good, said uh, Mr. McQuaid. I was asked if I wanted to participate in a sponsored walk from Kilbarrick to Holt. And was it an aid of charity, Mr Cahill? And Mr Cahill replies, I'm not sure. I didn't get sponsorship myself. I didn't. I just went for the walk. So here we have a situation where Mr Cahill doesn't know what the 32 County Sovereignty Committee really does. And he's involved in a walk from Kilbarrick to Holt which I believe will take somewhere in the region of an hour and a half. So he doesn't know what the charity is for. I'm very sorry, Mr. Cahill, and I do believe the public when they see this will have to question again the statement you made on the 24th of June, 2020, when you said you did not lay once. 